regular expressions, a guided tour. Uh, this will be our guide. No, not really. Um, but uh, uh, I asked for that as part of my, my uh, spiel for doing the presentation. And Brian is awesome and created the Ampler Gopher for us. So what is a regular expression? What are regular expressions? So the short ex uh, uh, explanation is regular expressions are sequences of characters that define a matching pattern using a specialized language. All right. So let's expand that a little bit. Regular expressions define patterns, and those patterns then describe sets of strings. So they match. You, you come up with a way of matching things. Um, they are used by many comic Unix tools, such as grep and sed. Uh, they can also be used in many programming languages, languages, such as Perl, PHP, and Python, and languages that don't start with a P, but those are the, the ones I uh, And then database query languages are also likely to support regular expressions. Um, sometimes finding out how to do that can be a little bit crafty, but it, 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 most things do. Uh, they were first created in the 1950s by some mathematician that I forgot to name in here, sorry. Um, and then they were popularized by Unix. Uh, you know, when Unix came around, uh, a lot of the tools that were created initially that we still use today, like Grep and Sed, started using regular expressions because they, they really are a very powerful tool. So uh, what are not regular expressions? Regular expressions are not globs. So I'm not going to cover globs, what they are here. But for those of you that are familiar with globbing, uh, for file name matching, it's a different language with similar character set that does a similar type of thing. They are different things. Uh, and I learned from teaching my class that if I teach the two topics back to back, it really confuses everybody. So uh, they are completely different things. Uh, as I say, they both uh, use similar character sets for matching. But globs are evaluated by the shell before the command is even run. So the shell looks at glob patterns and, and matches those before even starting up the command that you've asked it to run. Right? And then regular expressions are generally evaluated by the command. There are some, some uh, uh, things that shell can do a few things as well, but we're gonna, we're just, in this presentation, we're going to talk about uh, external commands. Uh, if you need to worry about it, which generally you do, use uh, quotes to protect your regular expression from uh, accidental globification. Right? Uh, globbing is mostly for file name matching. Regular expressions is mostly for everything else. Not explicitly true, but in, in use, that's really how we, we can look at it. Uh, and regular, express, regular expressions are not limited to a single line at a time, but most of the tools that use regular expressions default to looking at one line at a time. All the examples I'm giving tonight are looking at one line at a time. Many of those tools, if you, if you use the right options, especially programming languages, you can say, look at this block of all these lines at one time. But by default, they will look one line at a time. So, meet star. Star is a, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, matches the previous characters, so whatever came before it, and it matches zero or one of those characters. Uh, so it modifies whatever came before it. It's not itself matching anything. It's saying this thing before me, can I find some of that, right? Or none of that. So the examples I give here, x star says 0 or more x. y star is 0 more y. What's one of the things that that matches? 0 x. It matches nothing. So in the example I give here with the grep, uh, the dash e, by the way, it says to use extended regular expressions. We'll get to those in a little bit. Um, but the, this saying, I'm saying match x, y star, which means x followed by zero or more y, which is exactly the same as saying just look for x, right? Because zero y, I'm just looking for x. So this regular expression doesn't actually buy me anything. If, I, if that x, if I leave out the y star, so I just do grep x, and it doesn't matter how many y's come after the x, it's still going to match whether there's none of them or there's 4,000 of them. The, the y star doesn't actually change anything. It does change the computation. It, you, you, you go through a little bit more effort, possibly, for that. Um, although grep is very well optimized. Uh, the next one, grep xx star. Again, that's the same thing as just saying grep x followed that txt. So again, I'm just looking for an x followed by 0 or more x, which means followed by anything. Um, and then I can use grep x star. And that's another way to just cat the file, because every line is going to match. So 
if you if you try this on a file, try it on a short file so you see all the output, and then type cat in the file, and you'll see you get the same exact output both ways. Now I can also do other things like so here I'm, the last example I can sloppily look for British spelling, so I'm looking for color with zero or more O's or U's after the O, right? So if I get one U, I'll match and get the British color. If I get no U's, I'll get I'll match with the English, the the American color. And if I have a whole bunch of U's, somebody fell asleep while they were typing. I don't know. So maybe it's the cat version of color. All right. Probably have a whole bunch of other characters too. Some some uh, set examples for star. So said. It's grep is, let me back up a second just to make sure. Grep says search for this thing, right? Grep is a search tool. Most people that have been doing Linux for a while, but just in case somebody's new to the, this, grep says look for this pattern and let me know if you find it and give, give me the results. Sed says look for this pattern and then change it to something else. So in this case, I'm going to echo out so we can see what the pattern is, what the, the text is to begin with. So I'm echoing over Fred. Echo just says repeat Fred. So I'm taking Fred, piping that over to said, and I'm saying look for zero or more R, then replace them with an X. So I get, and I, in, in this case, the, the first case of zero or more R. So I get X Fred. Why do I end up with X at the front instead of where the R is? The zero R's, right? So that before the F, it already found zero R's, right? There was nothing there that matches, that matches, right? Look for nothing or some R's. Well, it found nothing and replaced it. Now that said example I give, by default, said finds the first match and does, the, does a replace and it, and it stops. I can use the G option at the very end, which says global, which says match as many times as you can on that particular line. So now I get X, um, and this is doing the same type of thing where, again, before the F, there was, no, there was nothing there, so it matched nothing, replaced it with an X. Then after the F, it hit an R. An R is zero or more R's, so it said, oh, I'll replace that with an X. Well, that's why I get one X there instead of three X's. I don't match before the R and after the R because it found the R. Done. And then again, after each, before and after each letter, after, you know, at each other point from one letter to another point letter, it's matching zero and putting another X in there. Uh, and then the last example I did, Anka instead of Fred, something with no R's. So you can show, see that it would throw an X in between each character before, before and after uh, uh, because it's matching zero R's, right? Now, let's meet plus. Now, plus is kind of cool. It takes us into a little fancier neighborhood, gives us, <laughs> gives us an extra option. So plus, again, is matching the previous character. It says, can I find this previous character? But what plus says is one or more of the previous character. Not zero, but one or more. So you've got to have at least one of them. So x plus is looking for at least one x. Y plus is looking for at least one y. So with the grep here, again, hold on, no, excuse me. So the, the, the first grep here, I'm looking for xy plus, so I want an x followed by at least one y. Right? But if I look for x plus, this gets me back to just looking for x, right? Because it's one or, one, one or more x's. Well, one x is the same, you know? So it doesn't matter how many other x's were there, that first x already matches, as far as the grep goes. Now, if I was matching with said, does it, does this change? Because what's what is grep doing? It it's a what kind of tool? Somebody said it search tool, right? So I'm all I'm doing is is it there? Show me the the entire line, right? What does said do? Matches it and replaces. It. So with a said a plus, we'll match all of the x's and replace all of the x's. We'll get to that's called greedy. We'll get to that in a second. But with the grep, this per, in, this, in this second example, the plus doesn't actually do anything. Right? Type, it takes more typing. Now, uh, in the case of color, 
with a U plus, I'm now looking explicitly for the British or cat versions of color. And I'm no, no longer going to find the Americanized versions of color. So some uh, plus set examples. Uh, so again, we're doing the zero or more, uh, or the first sample, because I don't have the G on there. Uh, so it found the R and replaced it. So it fixed, I don't know, that's, I guess it's short for FedEx, I don't know. Um, and in this case, again, R plus, so I'm looking for one or more R. So it didn't match before the F, it just ma it only matched the R. And if I do the global replace, I get the same exact result, because there was only one R in, this, in the initial string. And then for the third example with Anka with no R's, nothing changed. Right? It didn't match anything because there is no place where it matched one or more R's. Did you your slides still say zero or one in the second two Did they? I can't spell. No, OK. <laughs> All right, so that's, the, that's the, the trouble with copy and paste without rereading your, your stuff. Yes? Can the R character be replaced by a string with a plus? There is a way of doing that, which I actually don't cover. Uh, in, in uh, tonight's presentation. But yes, you can go through and put it in um, parentheses and then make that a full string. So, and, then, and you, you can do branching and stuff with it too. Um, so, uh, I will cover a different uh, thing with that. So, uh, there, as I mentioned, there's extended regular expressions. So, there are different variants of regular expressions. Um, part of it is tools were developed at different parts, of, parts in time. So the initial regular expressions weren't very powerful. Uh, people hadn't put as much effort into the, the languages. Also, computers weren't as powerful, so you couldn't quite do as much. Uh, nowadays, we can do quite a bit more. Uh, and uh, really, in the 80s, regular expressions expanded quite a bit. Uh, um, not quite a bit, but significant enough. Um, anyway, so uh, I recommend extended regular expressions. We'll get to that. Uh, man 7, the, so the seventh chapter of the, of the manual on regex will give you more information on extended and basic regular expressions. Uh, the manual calls them, uh, I forget what, the, what it calls them, but extended and basic. Uh, they, they call uh, basic something derogatory, so I leave it out. Uh, there's also Perl compatible regular expressions. Most programming languages support Perl uh, compatible regular expressions. So do some applications. So we're gonna, I actually have a few examples with GRAP and PGRE. PCRE, uh, and then Fregix. Uh, I made one of those up, figure out which one. All right. Um, all right. Uh, regular, uh, 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 regular expression variant use. For the command line and Unix tools, I recommend using extended regular expressions where possible. All right. If extended is not available, check the main page, because it probably is. Uh, if it's not, find a better tool. <laughs> um, so the basic regular expressions, don't handle some things like your, your parentheses and things like that. So it gets to be quite a pain to use those uh, uh, with strings, um, where you have to go through and do a lot of escaping to make it work. Just use re extended regular expressions wherever possible uh, for the command line tools and get past all that. Is there a way to tell which you have? I mean uh, you need to look at the, the command line or the, the options for the, the tool that you're using. Um, most tools will still default to basic regular expressions because they've been around for 30 years. Um, but like with grep with the dash capital E, that tells it to use extended reg, uh, ex regular expressions. And the dash R for said says to use extended regular expressions as well. If you're looking in code for uh, PCRE, that's often a, a library, standard library drop-in. So if you have access to the code, you can see it as being just dropped in. Regex. Yeah. So, and then for programming languages, uh, I recommend PCRE or native matching. So e different languages have their own native tools, and I I'm not enough of a programmer to, to speak to the capabilities of different uh, languages. Uh, the languages I program in are shell, so I use extended, or Perl, which is uses PCRE natively for some reason. Uh, so uh, those are the ones I use. Um, but uh, you know, look at that. Um, in many cases, I know of people that use the, the PCRE just because then one tool set works from language to language to language. Um, 
but I will have to get let somebody that's more familiar with langu programming languages talk to whether or not that's appropriate. I find it useful. Uh, the symbols that we've used thus far, star works for basic, extended, and PCRE, so that works for all three. Uh, the plus works for extended and PCRE, but not basic. So we've already got one difference between uh, uh, basic and extended. For the rest of the presentation, other than when I'm specifically pointing out PCRE, I'm going to be using extended regular expression examples, um, many of which the, 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 the items will work in, in Perl as well. So, All right, so catch up with Perl, uh, or with the PCRE. The dash capital P for grep is for PCRE. Uh, the man page does say that there might be some bugs that's trying to work on it, and it said that for like 15 years, so I don't know if they where the, where the status is. Uh, but I know people that use it all the time. I don't because I use extended, but I know people that use it all the time, so they can just use PCRE everywhere. Uh, so the, the examples here essentially give you the same results that you were getting with the extended regular expressions with grep. Uh, same thing with the plus examples. All right, now we're going to do something a little bit different, dot. So first of all, dot is a very technical term. We'll get to that. You know. So dot means any single character. But now we're actually matching the character in that particular place. So if I have fr dot d, I'm looking for something in that third spot, so between the r and the d, but any particular character in there. The plus and the, and the, and the star, we're saying what happened before me, look for some of that, right? The dot is saying right in this particular location, I want something. Um, it matches any single character except line breaks. There are some places where it'll match line breaks as well, um, but again, we're looking in, in my, for most tools, it does a single line at a time so you don't have any line breaks to begin with because those have already been parsed out. Uh, plus and star match whatever comes before them, dot matches what's in place. X dot plus is x followed by one or more characters. So x followed by something, anything, or more anything. And then y plus, uh, dot plus is, is the same thing, followed by one or more characters. Um, some examples. Uh, so the, the uh, x dot star is, is still just grep x, because dot star says find zero or more anything. Well, zero or more anything is still zero. And so, so any x will do. Um, X plus star, now you're saying, okay, I want X and at least one other character. I want something else after that X. Uh, and then the, uh, the last one, uh, the Fred uh, dot star is saying, you know, look, everybody can find edge examples, but in my particular, just simple example, uh, we're going to look for derivatives of the name Fred that start with Fred. So Freddy and Frederica, things like that. But it doesn't match Fred, because there's got to be something after that D, right? Uh, some set examples. Uh, the R dot plus is looking for an R plus one or more things, any things? Yes? In the previous example, is the space of character? Space is a character, yes. So Uh, actually not, because the echo will ignore the spaces. So yeah, echo trims on either side. The, well, the, the spaces become separators. I think the shell trims them before echo does it. But yeah. Um, but uh, correct, if there were spaces in there, it would match the space as well. Uh, so anyway, so it's looking for R followed by one or more anythings. So it found the entire red and replaced it with an X. So I was talking about the plus and, st and, and star are greedy. Greedy meaning they will match as much as they can. Uh, and then uh, the next example, um, globally, well, the first one matched everything already. So you get the same result. Uh, third example. OK, so in this example, I'm looking for things before and including the R. So all the examples I've given thus far have been afterwards. In this particular case, it's in front. Same type of thing, but you know, I, I thought it'd be good to, to, to show left, right type of stuff. Do you have too many processes? 
uh, quite possibly. Oh no, I'm looking. Well, I was looking for one or more R's. So I probably have too many pluses, but it works. So. <laughs> and then the last example there is dot dot. So I'm saying look for one character and another character. So throw, go through and replace it. Oh, so oh, actually, in this case, I start with the F. So look for an F followed by any character followed by any character. So basically an F and any two characters. And then it replaced those with X, so I end up with XD as well. All right? Uh, and uh, as uh, uh, Ed and Jill have been pointing out, if you have questions, go ahead and ask during the presentation. I'm, I'm fine with that. The repeated dot uh, um, doesn't require the matches to be the same character as I had in the last example. So the, dot, the first dot it matched the R, and the second dot matched the E. They don't have to be the same exact character. At the very first example on, the, on that page, it matched the R-E-D, they weren't just all R's. So any character. Uh, plus and star are greedy, they will match everything they can. Uh, and then plus and star combined with dot will match everything. Right? Now, again, with star, it's zero or more everything. And with plus, it's one or more everything. But they will match everything that they can uh, because they're greedy and they will, they will go all the way to the end of the line or until they hit something that doesn't match anymore. Um, but since they match everything, you don't get that. Right. All right. Uh, an important part, part of this, when you're looking at things, especially file names that have periods in them, right? Beautifulsunset.jpg. When you put that into a regular expression, that .jpg, that dot is a dot. It's not a period. So it will match any characters. So in this example, let's say that somebody's been sending me a bunch of, of images. Um, it will match, in this particular case, an underbar JPG instead of a dot JPG, right? Or an X, or any other character that you put in there. Spaces, whatever else might be there. Um, so when you're doing regular expressions, be cautious. In most cases, it doesn't matter, especially like for file endings and stuff, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, if you want to match a period, make sure you're matching a period instead of matching a dot, instead of anything. And we'll get to that with the single character quote. So single character quote is a backslash, uh, which is the, the one that moves around. The regular slash is the one that's down here on the bottom right of your keyboard. The backslash tends to, tend to, tends to float around the keyboard a lot, but mostly above the enter, I think, nowadays. So backslash will quote the next character um, so that the next character will not be interpreted as a special character. So going back to my .jpg example where you're trying to find a file that ends in jpg, backslash dot says treat this dot like an actual period and don't treat it like a, a special character that matches anything. It is just a period. Um, if you want to match a star, backslash star. If you want to match a plus, backslash plus. How do you match a backslash? Backslash, backslash. So top left to bottom right. And let me go back to this mode. All right. Ooh, hey. All right. Uh, there's also grouping. So this is different from where you were, at, you were asking about matching an entire string. This will be different from that. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. So grouping says match one of the characters in the group. Right? So in this particular case for set, I'm saying look for uh, what do I call these? Uh, Lowercase English full vowels. If you look at the bottom of the slash character, it will tell you so look for whether the, the five vowels we all learned about. Or slash or um, and the replace those with a dot. So, so that you're one, just the yeah. bottom one is max. What is, you know, what's changing? Yep. Um, but notice that it matched you know, any one of those. I did a, a G, so it says match as many, many as you can. Um, but it will match in any of those five things. Um, it doesn't have to be a logical group. So the next one, well, I guess they still kind of did a logical group. Uh, but I went, went through and just did, did a, a few other characters. Uh, the order that the characters are in, are in don't matter. So I could have done the A, E, I, O, U backwards. Uh, I can't say that quickly, but if I had to type them backwards, it would still match. It's any one of those characters, whatever order they appear in the search field. 
Uh, and then we can do a range as well. So here I can do A to E. And that says, look for the first five characters of the alphabet, any of the first five characters of the alphabet. And again, replace them with a dot, and I'm doing global. Uh, be careful, you can't do A to, A to U. Well, you can, but it won't give you vowels. It will give you A to U. So anything in the alphabet up until the letter U. Um, and I mentioned lowercase. We are case sensitive in Unix. So these are going to be going through and looking for lowercase letters. Uh, I can tell SAD to look for case insensitive, so it doesn't care. I can also change the, the regular expression to look for lowercase a to lowercase e and also uppercase a to uppercase e. Um, but I didn't want to get too terrible, terribly complex in my examples. Uh, and then just like with the a to e, I can do 1 to 9 and do, do the, the uh, uh, digits. Uh, I will leave it as an exercise for home to figure out where to put the zero if you want to get all 10 digits. All right. Um, so you can also use character classes. Uh, not these types of character classes, though, whether they play NetHack or Dungeons Dragons, whatever. Um, but character classes that uh, are specific to our Unix tools that represent a particular type of character. So in this case, uh, the character class is, an, is alpha, which means alphabet. Um, now with the character class, your character class is actually, I gave back here, open square brackets, colon, the name of the character class, another colon, and close square brackets. So we have open and square, open close square brackets with colons in between them and the name of the character class in between them. But when we use them, we get double square brackets because the only place that you can use the character classes for regular expressions is within a group. And we get groups by using the open and close square brackets which I had in the slide but didn't actually mention. So if you read really fast before I flipped over that, you saw that all of those uh, uh, groups, groups had open and closed square brackets. So inside the grouping, I can use a character class and say, OK, in this particular case, match any, any alphabetic character and replace it with dot. Again, I'm using the global so it matches all of them. Uh, then I took a random string and said, OK, just match the lowercase characters and changed those out from that string, flipped it around, said same string, go ahead and just match the digits, the numbers. Uh, and then alnum uh, is not aluminium, however you say it in your language, right? Uh, it is alphanumeric, so anything in the alphabet or a digit. Uh, one thing with the alpha is it is language dependent. So if I were matching by hand, I could do the same thing as alpha at the very first example by saying A to Z lowercase and A to Z uppercase, and that works well for English. But if you have strange people that do things in other languages and show up with character sets that have different characters in them, that A to Z might not actually match because your, your alphabet and that other language might be something else. So if you want to uh, make this work more uh, with other languages as well, using alpha is one of the ways to get around that. Is let, let the tools take care of it for you. Uh, there's a lot more to take into account to, to deal with foreign languages as well, um, but that is a, a simple one. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, the the, lo the that was the the phrase I left out of what I was saying. Localization. Thank you. So localization. So for instance, one of those strange people is me. I set most of my systems to be in German, and so my my localization is different. In the case of of German, A to Z is still A to Z. We just have some extra characters in there. Um, and dots on top of things for no apparent reason. No, there's reasons for it. But anyway, um, so uh, this is one way of, of taking care of that. Now, if you're using this as a sysadmin to look for particular strings in like output, go, hey, did this break? So search for this error message. Make sure you set it to English or whatever language you're checking for because the, the errors are different in different languages and your strings won't match anymore. And if it doesn't match right correctly and it wipes out your system because you didn't check for it, do some checks first. That's horrid. <laughs> where does the ascent fall in the alphabet? Uh, right where it does. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's right after the S, but I'm not certain. So, yes. Is, for example, the exclamation point included in the alpha? Exclamation point is punctuation, not an alphabet. Yeah. Okay, alphabet. So, yeah. all these characters are considered part of alpha. Yeah. 
So it's, it's the 26 characters upper and lower, and uh, well, the alpha is yeah, the 26 characters upper and, upper and lower for English, uh, for American English. I don't know, maybe they throw extra stuff in, in British English. They do in the words, why not in the alphabet? All right, um, lower is lowercase. There's an upper as well, uh, digit LNUM. All right, uh, so here are some of the character classes. There are more uh, character classes than this, um, but this gives you an idea of some of the things that are available. Alpha, digit, we already covered those. LNUM, we covered that. Blank is space and tab. There's also a space character class that is a whole bunch of other things. For the most part, if you're wanting to do things, blank is probably the one you want. Punct is punctuation. That's where you can get your, your uh, uh, exclamation point. But it's anything that isn't a blank or LNUM. So the two character classes above it, punct is anything that isn't those as far as a printable character. There are non-printable characters that we call control characters, and there's a character class for those as well. Uh, character is one. So it is one of the things in the group. Right? So back to the, the group example where I did A-E-I-O-U and matched one of those at a time. The character, uh, character class is then one of those things in a group. I can add other things in the group. So in this case, I, I added the character class for digit to get rid of the numbers. But I also did the first three characters that were in the string, capital C, lowercase i, capital H, and matched those. But it's any one of those things, right? A C, I, H, or a number. Uh, and I can do multiple character classes inside the group. Uh, and again, when I talked about you end up with double square brackets, but it's two different things. You have the character class with the square brackets inside the group with square, square brackets. So you've got to get the outer square brackets and then a group of whatever you want. So that's why these character classes don't have the double square brackets because they're part of a group. All right. And then I can anchor searches or, or, or uh, matches to one end or the other. A caret matches the beginning of the line. So in that first example I had where Fred got to be, became X Fred because it was matching nothing. Well, that nothing at the, before that is the very beginning of the line. It is a special point uh, as far as, as a lot of tools are concerned. In, in the case of regular expressions, it is a particular point. And then the very end of the line, the last thing on the line, is the dollar sign. Now, in the example I gave there, Fred, the D, and then end of line. But if you were in a different case, to, to go to your example, the spaces, if there were spaces after that, like if, if, I, if, this was, if this was matching inside a file where I have Fred and then 50 spaces, then that, the end of line will match after the 50 spaces. It doesn't throw those out whatever got tossed to it. Now if I do it on a shell, the shell will have tossed them out before we get there. But if, you know, from, from a file, uh, it will still match the spaces and tabs and whatever else is in there, right? Control characters, and it's going to match the beginning, the end of the line. It doesn't care what all the stuff is in between. I think the word is carrot with an E instead of carrot. Could be. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll check that, but thank you. Uh, yeah, could be, because the, the carrot with an O should have two R's anyway. anyway. So I've, <laughs> I got it wrong somehow. We'll figure out how. All right. So uh, an example I give for, uh, uh, used in my classes for uh, beginning of the, the line. So the, the password file, if you're not familiar with the password file, uh, is a colon delimited database, plain text database. Um, and it starts off with a username. So the root account is the, the, the account that has uh, access to everything still today. Um, so my first example is saying look for root in the password file. And I get back the, the entry for root. So it's got the username followed by colon, followed by the next field, the next field, next field. The X is the password. So X is all you have to type to get, no. Uh, X means go look somewhere else for the password. Um, the zero and zero is the user ID and the group ID for root. Uh, root is, the, is just extra information about root, uh, the home directory, and then the default shell. But each of those are different fields. Uh, if you notice, inside that entry for root, there is the word bin, the, care, or the, the, the sequence, B-I-N. So your shell is going to be in a bin directory. So every 
account that has a shell will have bin in it. Well, there also happens to be a bin user. So if you want to find the bin user, uh, what I can do then is say, let's anchor bin to the beginning of the, of the, um, the line and look just for the bin user. Right? Now, if I, was, if I wanted to make sure I only got the bin user, I've actually made a mistake. I left something out. What I leave out and why? Say so again, you were trying to find the bin user? If I just want to find the bin user, this, this grep will actually match more than that. I need a colon to say the end of that field, right? So not, but not a dollar because I don't want to match the end of the line. I just want to end, match the end of the field. It's a colon delimited database. So if there's a user called binary, it will match? It would match that as well, yep. So I, let, I did it this way particularly so we could talk about it. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I, I make some of you think. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, and an ASCII GNU. Can we count? No, it's a GNU. It's, a, it's an antelope. I did not know GNUs are a type of antelope. I thought they were types of cow. <laughs> but apparently they're antelopes. They don't seem to spring well like the antelopes I always thought. But anyway. Um, and then some ways of contacting me. You could also show up to meetings except for next month. Oops, went too far. Uh, a couple of resources. Uh, the, hist the Wikipedia history uh, entry is where I found out about when they were created and the mathematician that I forgot to mention in the presentation. Um, here's a couple of uh, websites that will help you learn regular expressions. Um, and this presentation will go up on my site, which I listed here. No, I didn't. Yeah. Sure. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I thought that maybe it's on the front page. I'll, I'll look in a second. Uh, resources. And then credits. The gopher with antlers is, is courtesy of Brian. Uh, he did that for me earlier this week. Uh, the ASCII doors came from the ASCII Co. UK art page. And the GNU came from Kause. All right, and let's see. Did I... I didn't put my website up there either. Um, so, we'll, but my it'll go up on the site, and uh, I think it's slash talks. So, lufthans.com slash talks will get you the talks. It's not up there yet, but I'll get it up there for a short period of time. Uh, uh, I might take this down while I do the scale talk next month. Um, that's going to be based on this. All right, any questions that didn't already come up? Uh, spelling errors that I, I made that didn't come up? Complete and utter failures in my regular expressions. Anything? I yes, said? Uh, it's not really a question, but you should check your input because regular expressions have been used as a denial of service uh, attack. Yes, but I trust myself. And I created all the, the, the text I was working on. So, but yes. If you're, if, so if you're using, Ed's point is if you're using regular expressions to parse text that you got from somewhere else especially like programming languages, if you're taking stuff in from a web form or something like that, you need to sanitize the content before you start manipulating it because otherwise somebody might have put some things in there to, uh, to, to cause bugs in your, in your code uh, or in your CPU uh, and escape all of, your, uh, all of your security and take over your systems. Um, but the nice thing is now, is now we can all be mine, uh, uh, mining Bitcoin, uh, whether we know it or not. Uh, it, yeah. the, the point is, uh, regular expressions can evoke a lot of computation. And so if you accept a regular expression in, as a search term or something, yeah. uh, somebody can maliciously ask your computer to you know, compute pi forever. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, aside from uh, vetting your input, which is very smart too, uh, you could also do something like impose a, a, a U limit on the processes. So you spin it off, you fork it, and then you U, U limit the CPU time to one minute or two minutes. Yeah, so you can put limits on what, how, much, how many resources that particular process could be using uh, via time or percentage of P a CPU or things like that. All right, any other... Uh, Comments, questions? Nope. All right. Well, that's that's that. Um, uh, thank you very much.